You should already know how to draw forms by now, and you should be able to draw a grid. The um, grid practice is basically just, you know, taking lines, making them evenly spaced, roughly turning your page around to make it comfortable to draw if you need to, if you're standing up, whatever. You can also take a shape and draw a grid within that shape. Works with triangles. With a triangle, I would recommend not putting one right down the center because that's kind of boring. If you offset it, it'll be more interesting. Do that with the circle too. And so on. Okay. So now what you need to do is figure out how to translate that to like maybe a plane. So a square or rectangle in perspective is basically just a triangle that you cut off, right? And to grid that, if you want to go logically, you can use the X method, which if you want to find the center of any rectangle as a shape, you draw an X and it gets you the center in both directions. So here, find the center there, find the center there, and then you can subdivide from there, and continue to draw smaller and smaller x's if you want. Or you can just kind of go intuitively and in knowing that this distance is smaller and the front distance for the center. And you can create something like reasonable, basically. Okay, this will be probably faster. This is more methodical, more accurate. Then what you're gonna do is translate this to all the forms you know how to draw. So you need to do a box, right? And the trick to this one is you have to grid the top as well. And when you do this and you drop a line down, you can just continue it across the corner. That makes everything easier to draw. Boom. 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 There you go. Got the top, go around the sides, boom, 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 boom. There, four by four grid on all three sides. If you have a prism, basically you have this situation applied here, right? And then if this prism is solid, you can then overlay a grid on that. And your first stage, remember, is always soft and light. I'm kind of drawing in demo mode, but if I were really drawing this for myself, my, my first initial lines would be very, very soft like that, to where you could barely see them. That gives you a lot of room to work with. Then you might go with your um, pyramid form Right? And you can place your grid on the pyramid. Okay, making sure they kind of roughly intersect at that corner. And you can play with the shape of your of the pyramid as necessary. Um, let's see, then you've got your sphere, right? The sphere is a little bit trickier, but basically you got to think of like longitude, latitude lines, right? So you can think of wrapping your northern and su southern hemisphere. You 
and then think of what latitude, latitude and longitudinal lines look like. If you want to, you can emphasize certain parts of the grid more than others. Start light, go dark, go back, start light, dark, light in one line, light, dark, light, light, dark, light, and so on. And that line weight can help you bring things backwards in space. Right? So now it feels more dimensional because you're doing that. And of course you want to do cylinders too. A cylinder is basically just a rectangle with curvy bits, right? So again, you probably don't want to put your first bit of grid lines right down the center. Let it go back, and then you're going to create lines that parallel the bottom and top. The other one, the Will Weston addition to the form vocabulary, is the ribbon, right? So the ribbon starts small, gets bigger as it comes forward, right? And then you can pretty easily pull a grid through this sucker. You just focus on subdividing the center. Remember, they get closer together as they turn. And where they face you, it gets back to square. And you can, you can again subdivide that further if you need to. And you can subdivide again. So you can make a really intense grid pattern. And then, of course, you've got the cone, right? That's another important one. Your cone is basically just a triangle, right? You make it curvy, and you have a cone. So let's draw a cone down here at the bottom. We'll do cone. And then we'll apply the grid to it. Um, There you go. Grid for the count. So this is an important assignment because as you get more and more complicated, we're going to start, to give you a preview, we're going to start putting little shapes in there, right? We're going to be able to take all these grids, put little diamond patterns or whatever inside the grid, you know, make little archways or dragon scales. Right? And begin to do complicated things, and eventually we'll get into doing textures. You know, if you want to, you can start to think about lighting, right? Well, how do I light this thing? With your shadow core, your tone. A little bit of half tone to turn it backwards. Use your core value on the edge. Use varieties of line weight to make things turn. 